And I think we have too few uh, directors who, I mean, the directors themselves want to be involved. For a long time after we had all the economic problems, um, nursing directors said, my, my administrator doesn't want me to be um, a member. And I would say, I would leave that administrator tomorrow if I had to scrub floors because I think that any nurse who would sell herself mm -hmm. down the river uh, just be, to get a job uh, when there's so many different places that a nurse can go to. It is, to me, it is, uh, we really would be better off had she never even been a nurse, is my feeling. And I'm really, you know, adamant about that because I paid nursing fees willingly donated every time they needed money and never made any money. You know, I left nursing, what was my highest salary? That ought to be interesting. I was um, the executive of the board of nursing when I left nursing. And my salary was right at $18,000 a year. And that took some tall doing mm -hmm. to get that $18,000 salary approved in, under the finance department in Frankfurt. Um, when I went to the Board of Nursing, I had clerks doing monumental tasks at the board who were paid minimum interest salaries. Some of them weren't making $3,000 a year. I just hit the ceiling and um, restructured, did, made them all do time and motion studies, met with the state personnel director, got reorganized the office, got everybody's salary to where they could pay a babysitter and didn't have to call me in and say I have to stay home and take care of my children. Um, got them earning decent salaries Re and, and assigned them responsibilities that you know, earned and merited those salaries. And uh, we still had a $37,000 surplus at the Board of Nursing when I left the Board of Nursing. They went broke two years later with a, an executive who had not had any kind of an executive experience. I felt badly about that because, um, I, you know, I felt like that, that maybe, you know, I could have done something. She didn't want to be oriented because she felt she had her own style of management, and I appreciated that. So, you know, you can sink or swim in a job that you really, you know, if you haven't had a long mm -hmm. administrative experience, it, it could be, you know, and it was a, uh, in a transitional period with going to full technology, you know, with uh, uh, full computerization of all, kind, you know, of all the records and everything. It wasn't. You know, it was an interim time to be for difficult developing programming, approving programming with, you know, hiring programming experts and things. So I, you know, it was a tough time. But uh, I think we have a very, very uh, efficient staff now. Kentucky's been well served at the board of nursing. You talked about where you felt, what you think will happen with K&A. What about, how do you think the nurses will ask for change? Well, I don't think there's any question about it. They have to change as the healthcare system. Dollars change, and the dollars are, are, are still going into hospitals for acute care. And so that takes care of an educational, uh, an educational system is going to have to change in order to prepare those highly uh, skilled nurses functioning in very complex situations. So I think the curriculums are going to make major changes because the practice areas are being forced to change because of the changing healthcare system. I think the values that the um, insurance company and the government are looking at in terms of uh, the uh, service for the dollar will probably be uh, higher and higher percentages of health care. Uh, home care does make a difference. I think that there needs to be uh, some uh, better publishing and uh, documented research in this area. Um, uh, it distresses me that, that 
that curriculum for that home care out of the picture. We implemented a home care plan at St. Joseph's Infirmary in 1968. And here we are almost 20 years later, and many programs do not have a home care component in a curriculum. I think that's tragic because uh, my father was one of the early recipients of home care. I was able to keep him home until he died at home with terminal CA. He was only in bed nine days and did not have any, any kind of a need, any kind of suctional kinds of machinery at all attached to him. He went to sleep very beautifully and at home uh, because he was on home. I was able to do it because uh, I had my father on home care program out of St. Joe. Uh, Evelyn Best was our instructor in home care. She was about a 30 year experienced public health nurse. She uh, uh, took on a rotating basis students into home care uh, that had been hospitalized patients and uh, uh, they went in every day for about two hours uh, to care of my mother was there to take care of my dad during the day I took care of him at night and uh, but the little nursing student gave him his bed bath for those nine days and uh, uh, stripped his linens and uh, uh, really uh, when he had tremendous spinal involvement going. Uh, malignancy that had practically, if he had done much moving, would have been fractured. And uh, so they, we decided that I did not have a doctor making home care. And between Evelyn and I and the nursing students were able to demonstrate that home health care worked. And we needed very little sedation, almost none. I took it in, I ordered it took very little of it because we would be uh, stimulated every day with you know young nursing students coming in and and uh, interested you know they're interested in him and uh, he was you know his nutritional status didn't deteriorate and he just it was a whole demonstration that the project of home care really makes a difference and it's tragic to me that we went through that whole hiatus in which home care was lost uh, as a part mm -hmm. of, of uh, nursing curriculum. It's now getting back into the curriculum. But I think that that all the kinds of non-traditional roles that nurses have, uh, you know, have ever been involved in, in terms of uh, wellness uh, classes, entrepreneurs that are becoming wellness experts, nutritional experts, uh, dietitians uh, have have pretty well decided that they're going to stay into the hospital and college settings for teaching. Um, they can be involved in terms of, I think nurses have a very, very strong nutritional component in their, in their curriculums. I think they need it. As, and uh, I think that, you know, as health teachers, uh, they're going to, I can see, if I were a young nurse today, I would uh, take my show on the road. I would offer my uh, services on a contractual basis, uh, teaching all kinds of groups, church groups, um, uh, high school groups. Uh, I would go to boards of education and uh, uh, begin to sell services, develop curriculums to teach teachers. You know, I just see a uh, whole opportunities mm -hmm. in non-traditional ways for nurses to, who want to be self-employed uh, can see them self-employed in home care because I believe that there will be funding. There is now recommended a bill that uh, was introduced in the last, that 90th Congress is going to be reintroduced in January by uh, uh, the little senator, I believe, from Hawaii. Um, is going to reintroduce it in January. It's a bill that was developed by the American Nurses Association uh, with, uh, you know, with their uh, legal department. And uh, I firmly believe that, the, it, it, that it may pass because I see the, uh, a different philosophy in a, a Democratic Senate and a Democratic House, which has always been more downtrodden the way into uh, 
that it has a better chance this year. If it doesn't pass this year, it'll pass in the next. It'll be like the Academy of Nursing that didn't make it the first time, and it didn't make it past Reagan the second time, but they, they passed it over its veto. So I really believe that if it doesn't get through this time, uh, and it may well get through this time, because more and more, I mean, this National Commission is recommending uh, certainly that reimbursement um, is an economic approach to, uh, um, you know, the in-hospital settings. I think that more and more people are, uh, would keep people in their own homes rather than assign them to nursing homes, which is also a costly kind of uh, system. I think more and more nurses are going to be involved in long-term care because uh, the older population is, is growing in numbers. I think a, a real problem is going to be shortage of nurses because and uh, I think that that's going to be a challenge to nursing because uh, if they're not able to hire nurses in hospitals, they'll go back again maybe to ancillary personnel large numbers. I think that's, uh, uh, they found that in the beginning that that, that was why. Then they learned, and learned that the body count with the having to provide the health care packages and all the other kinds of, of fringe benefits, that body counts were expensive and that nurses could do the kinds of things that they had four and five other people doing. So most of the, the uh, I would say, first class hospitals, a minimum of going to all RN staffs to start with. And with a high, as much good treatment as they can about the light level nurses, I think I've seen that picture change. That's been a real, I've been happy to see that picture change. Kentucky's been on the forefront of the movement to education because it closed all their diploma schools. There are many states that have many large numbers of, uh, of diploma programs school. left. And there's where the, uh, there's a problem. I think we're still going to have some problems with phasing out vocational education and putting the technical nurse uh, uh, into you know, that setting. I think grandfathering is going to create some problems because employers, I think it's going to create maybe some unemployable nurses because the, the expectation of the, uh, you know, of the RN, uh, professional nurse, uh, and if they mm -hmm. grandfathered so because we can't uh, you know, legislate a person's livelihood away from them. I was the chairman of the legislative committee that got the first actual mandatory uh, Nurse Practice Act passed in this state. And uh, I know what it meant to uh, have all of these grandfathered in LPNs who hadn't had no preparation, mm -hmm. but because they've been practicing as an LPN, were automatically uh, brought in. Most of them have died today, and so that's what happens. You have to wait until attrition takes place with death. However, I think that there may be some tragic kinds of examples happen in the phasing in because some people will not. Uh, bring themselves up to a competency level, uh, commensurate with the licensure. I think that that's posing you know, some serious situations for the individual nurse who catches, gets herself caught in that catch-22 situation. I think it's going to, so it's going to have, there's going to, it's not going to be a, a decade of, um, without trauma. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that nurse, the problem that really bothers me a lot is the, the fewer numbers in the age group who have a potential for recruitment into nursing. With the multiplicity of other kinds of things that a nurse can, that a person can mm -hmm. choose um, as a career choice, I'm afraid in this nursing, uh, and nurses see themselves as professional, joining their professional association, uh, sitting in challenging leadership positions in the profession, doing exciting kinds of things over and beyond their jobs. 
um, that they will not be the mirror images that will be promoting career uh, careers in nursing. I think nurses, the average salary now, be the last survey I saw the last, the average nursing salary today across the country is $23,000, which means a lot of them are making a lot less than that. Because, in, for example, in the position I left at $18,000 um, 12 years ago, is now uh, near $50,000, 40 to $50,000 for recruitment range. Not that every, every executive is making that salary, but for any recruitment range, you're not gonna get anybody into those jobs uh, Without a forty, around a forty thousand uh, dollar salary. I think I kept you. I'm giving you a no, that's okay. It's been fascinating. It really has.